Hello and welcome to the course Design and Implementation of Human Computer Interfaces. Welcome to lecture number 4, Human Computer Interface Development Life Cycle. So, in the previous few lectures, we have learned about the field of interactive systems and what are the core design concerns in the interactive software development and also we have got some idea of software engineering life cycles or system development life cycle or software development life cycles. Now, these life cycles provide us a systematic way to think about developing a product, software product. In this lecture, we are going to learn the life cycle for interactive software development. So, earlier we learned about the waterfall model, which is the most well known and fundamental of all the software development life cycle models. It consists of 7 stages, 6 or 7 stages, feasibility study, requirement analysis and specification, where we identify and specify the requirements, design, coding and code testing, system integration and testing, deployment and maintenance. So, with these 6 or 7 stages followed one after another, we can build and deploy any software, that is the idea. Now, our concern is software to be used by layman users. As we have repeatedly emphasized, this brings us to the concept of user centric or user centered design, where the software that we develop should be easy to use, in other words, it should be usable for the intended users. Now, the classical waterfall model if we want to follow those stages to build a user centric software, then the model actually creates a problem. Because our core concern here is usability. In order to do that, we have mentioned earlier that we need to take into account the users either in active mode or in passive mode. Now, taking into account the users is not explicitly the concern of the waterfall model. Instead, the model is designed to build efficient systems rather than usable systems. So, what kind of problem it creates? In order to develop user centric system we require iterations between stages, because that is required to take into account the feedbacks we receive at each stage of the design. Now, if we want to do that with the classical waterfall model, then the model becomes rather messy. For example, suppose this is a linear flow of the process from feasibility study, we go to requirement stage, then design stage, then coding stage, integration stage, deployment and maintenance stage. Now, in case of user centric approach, we need to take into account users in every stage. Now, suppose in design stage, we find out user input which does not match with the requirement specification we have obtained in the previous stage, then we may have to go back to this stage. After coding while going for testing, we find out some issue, then we may have to go back to this stage. We may also need to go back to this stage directly rather than going in the design stage. After again system testing, we may need to go back to unit level or design or requirement stage. So, too many iterations 
which makes it difficult to visualize the overall process and creates confusion in the mind of the developer. So, in order to handle that, we can refine this life cycle to suit our purpose. So, this figure illustrates such a life cycle for implementation of user centric design approach. Like waterfall model, it has several stages starting with the feasibility study, then we have requirement gathering analysis and specification stage. Now, from this stage we go to a design prototype evaluate cycle stage. Here there are three sub stages design, prototype building and early evaluation and these three are connected in an iterative cycle. Once that cycle stabilizes, that means we do not find any more issues to be resolved based on user feedback and we can go for implementation, then we come to the coding and implementation stage. Once that is done, we go for code testing. Now, after code is tested, that means our system is executing as per our requirement, we need to go for another user testing, which we are calling empirical study or empirical research. So, in this stage, the system is not tested for code efficiency, rather it is tested for usability. Now, based on the findings in this stage, it may be possible that we go back to this cycle. Similarly, based on the findings in this uh, cycle, it may be possible that we go back to requirement stage. And the last stage is deployment and maintenance like waterfall model. Now, this design prototype evaluate cycle to requirement gathering stage, this cycle may be required based on the outcome of this evaluation, but still it is not very frequent. It is expected to be not very frequent. Similarly, from empirical study, we may have to go back to design prototype evaluate cycle, which again is expected to be infrequent, although may still be required to refine our designs. So, the needs of building an usable software may be taken care of with the help of this type of a life cycle model. Let us briefly have a look at different stages of the life cycle. Now, in the requirement gathering stage, since we are dealing with human computer interfaces, so here we need to identify requirements from the users, end users or layman users rather than only the customer or client of the product. That is very important. Accordingly, we have to deploy different techniques that are used to capture end user requirements such as contextual inquiry, ethnographic studies, cultural probes and so on. Next comes the design prototype evaluate cycle. So, it involves three sub stages design, building prototype based on design and early evaluation. Now, why this loop is required? It is required. So, first we go for a design based on the requirement we identified. Now, this design is prototyped and again user feedback is taken. Based on the feedback, it user feedback or uh, some feedback is taken in the early evaluation stage. Based on the feedback, we refine the design, again go for prototype building and so on till we find out that no further changes in the design is required. That means, the design has stabilized. So, at that point we break the cycle and go to the next stage of coding and implementation. 
So, in this cycle it is expected that there will be many iterations accordingly our early evaluation and prototyping should be simpler to carry out. So, those should be quickly achievable so that less time is required to build a prototype or to evaluate a prototype. Now, one thing we should note here, when we are talking of design, so two concepts are involved. One is design of the interface, that is design of the interface and interaction from the point of view of the end user. So, in that design, nothing related to implementation or coding is involved. And when we are talking of building prototype and quickly evaluating, we are actually referring to the design of the interface and interaction. So, we first design the interface and or interaction, build a prototype, get those prototype evaluated quickly, refine our design and so on till we find out no more refinement is required in the design of the interface and interaction. Once that design is stabilized, then we design the code or how to implement the system, we go for that design. So, that is also implicitly involved in this cycle, although that design of code is also iterative, but that iteration does not require end user feedback. Instead, those iterations are performed within the design team and their prototype is not necessary. So, essentially that iteration involves designing the code and evaluation by team, other team members or brainstorming to refine the design. So, conceptually two different cycles are being mentioned in this stage, one is interface design and the cycle associated with it, the other one is code design and the cycle or iteration associated with it. So, the entire cycle of design prototype early evaluation is important for interface design to take into account user input, whereas for code design prototyping is not required and evaluation is basically brainstorming within design team. Then comes implementation. So, now we are talking of implementing the code design that we have achieved in the earlier stage. Now, implementation can be done in traditional way that is by writing code and testing the code or debugging the code. So, here one thing to be kept in mind is that before we go for implementation, we try to get as good a design as possible, so that we do not need to modify the design later, then it will involve changing the code also, which is technically costly in terms of manpower. So, along with code, we need to test for the code. So, there are standard techniques available. The other important stage is empirical study. So, once the system is implemented and code is tested, that means the system gets executed without any flaw. We still need to know whether this overall product is usable or not. Code testing will not give us that knowledge. Instead, what we need to do is to get it tested with the end users again and that requires a systematic and scientific approach which is generally called empirical research or empirical study. So, this is required to ensure that the product conforms to the usability requirements. And this is not an ad hoc process, it requires systematic testing approaches, but these testing approaches are totally different from what we have employed for prototype testing or code testing. Again, the earlier stages are very important because empirical study is also a costly affair in terms of time, resource, manpower, cost. 
So, we should ensure that before going for empirical study, we should ensure that the implemented product is as good as possible. There should not be too many problems. Otherwise, we have to repeat this loop multiple times. It can be repeated once or twice that is still acceptable, but if we have to do it multiple times because the earlier stages we did not do properly, then that increases the cost as well as turnaround time of the overall system. In fact, it may lead to non-delivery of product also. So, to summarize, so we have discussed a software development life cycle that is tailor made for user centric design implementation. It involves important cycles. These cycles are important to take into account user feedback and ensure that the product is usable. In subsequent lectures, we will go through the details each of these stages. Whatever I have discussed in this lecture can be found in this book. You are requested to refer to chapter 2 section 2.1 to 2.4.2. So, that is all for this topic. Looking forward to meet you in the next lecture. Thank you and goodbye.